The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 28th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it off now. Send it off early. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be good enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now at 11.08, we've got a mixed bag. To the downside, you get the Dow off 148, S&P's off just slightly, Russell's off just slightly, semis down eight points, New York Stock Exchange off 59. To the upside, NDX 100, 74 points, a half a percent. Trendy's up 27, two tenths percent. NASDAQ composite, a half a percent, 64 points there. Gold's off seven bucks, silver down 17 cents, while lights recruit is trading out at 68.87. That's up a buck 17. Natural gas is off three pennies, uh, trading now down below the top of a uh, daily profile. We'll take a look at that during the show. And the 30 year treasury is basically flat out there, 127.19. Lead to charge, dollar wise, the upside. It's Mercado Libre. That's up 42 bucks. Mond God is up 22 bucks. Netflix is up 16, about 4%. Snowflake 13, 7%. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals 6%, 11 bucks and change. So the downside is Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up 26 bucks. 690 is where it's printing. Axum Therapeutics 10 bucks, 12%. Hershey's down nine bucks, a little over 3%. Tractor Supply, 3.5% or 8 bucks. Northrop Grumman, about $7, 1.5% the downside. We've got some movers, and we've got some shakers. But let's begin by taking a look at what? What do we want to take a look at? Let's take a look at, well, let's see where we're at market breadth-wise. Always good to start there. Let's start with the shortest time frame first. That's a 30-minute time frame. This is a 30-minute market breadth here for the... Um, S&P 500 shows 182 instruments below profile, 100 above. That is a bearish signal for its 30-minute time frame. If we look at the NDX 100 for its 30-minute time frame, it'll take just a moment here for this to populate. But shortly, we'll know that we've got 18 above, 29 below. So for the 30-minute time frames, we have negative market breath. So selling pressure should, if we take a look at those charts, in fact, let's just take a look at those charts. Let me get those up on our screen just to try to get a feel, if we can, as to where price might be headed to. So if you give me a moment here, we'll populate those 30-minute uh, charts, see if there's any kind of signals out here, 30-minute equity futures. Now we're going to go ahead and change screens. We'll see the white background screen, so it'll pop up here momentarily. And then we'll be able to take a look at the ES and the NQ. We can look at the other ones as well. But take a look at what's going on with regard to their 30-minute time frame charts. Sorry that it's taking so long here to populate. In the case of the ES Mini, hmm, it's got negative market breadth, 
But pricing above a green oscillator and change line, that is a bullish signal. That suggests really that instead of moving lower, what the ESP wants to do is move up to 44.24. You're trading above a 30-minute profile, above a green oscillator and change line. Those are conditions that are bullish. And the same is true with regard to the NQ. Now, in the case of the NQ, other than A to B equals CD pattern of the upside, I don't have any other price targets out there. So even though you've got negative market breadth, the uh, technical signals here are that the ES gets to 44.25 and the NQ continues to move higher out there. Let's take a look at the market breadth for the little bit larger time frames. Here we go to 60.40. Uh, we go to uh, daily and weekly. Here momentarily in the upper left-hand corner, this is the S&P 500 bullish across the board for their time frame, 60.40 daily and weekly. Let's try the NASDAQ 100 which is bearish for its 60-minute time frame. The others are bullish, 240 daily and weekly. On a 60-minute time frame, 32 above, 40 below. So let's come back here. Let's just switch over, take a look at the NQ charts themselves. If you give me a moment, I think we might have that up here. Here we go. And yes, we do have the NQ. So for its 60-minute time frame, the 60 minute shows the A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out here. A price is above profile and a green oscillator and change line. So even though it's negative market breadth, technical indicators say that it just wants to continue to rally. Now, there's the A to B point. If we just simply move this over to the uh, C area out here, see if I can do this here. Get it pretty close. Okay. And that's going to give us a, uh, a price projection that takes us up towards, don't use this as exact, 15,300-ish area out there. And that's on the uh, no other topping signal. Now, price might pull back to test old resistance, which could become new support. That's at 15,139 out there. So with regard to the NQ, even the uh, time frames that have negative market breadth, are still suggesting that uh, price wants to move higher out here. Let's just stay with the NQ chart. So 10 minute has a TD9 count top. So its level of support would be at about 15,140 or so on a further pullback. 30 minute chart, if it did generate a 30 minute bearish reversal candle, we've got 17 minutes ago, so too early to call. Well, that could then confirm a Rogeman Dominicator top. So we'll have to come back to that at around 1130. 60 minute though, no other uh, signal out there. Um, on the 120 minute chart, a close above 15.139 at uh, 12 noon, so another uh, uh, 47 minutes from now. If we get a close above that, that will negate a TD9 count and confirm the A to B equals CD pattern that we just took a look at. So, overall, with regard to the, let's take, uh, did we do this for the ES mini? I don't think that we did. So, let's take a look at its charts. We know on the ES mini, it's bullish for every time frame, with the exception being that 30 minute chart. So, on the 30 minute chart, we took a look at that on the other screen. That suggested to you and I that price wants to move higher. But let's get this entire set of charts here populated and we'll see what information they are providing for us. A different signal, I would think, than, uh, than with regard to what we just took a look at took a look at with regard to the NQ. So with regard to the ES mini, daily basis on a uh, pullback should find support at the uh, center. I'm sorry, it's oscillator and change line. That's at the six. No, I don't have the right instrument up here. Good Lord. Well, let's try this one more time. Oh, that didn't work either. Geez, Stevie. Sorry about that, folks. Well, we'll get it up here during the break. And then we'll uh, get to whatever charts, whatever requests. We've got one to take a look at BKNG. That's for Tim. Peak G says, Steve, what's your read on silver and gold? The DeMarc signal. So we'll take a look at silver and gold as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Instead of just going to the ES mini charts out here, I put up the two hour charts for each of the equity future uh, chart uh, contracts out here. So and, and it, the ES and the NQ are the ones that are really controlling uh, where the market is headed to. So with regard to the ES, I'll just simply expand this out. You can see that yesterday, yesterday morning, this formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Actually, it did that at five o'clock the uh, night before. And that led to a nice rally. That rally ran out of steam at its TD9 count breakdown resistance area at 44.2375. You can see not only to do that, it generated a bearish reversal candle, a bearish shooting star. Now, what price has done is pulled back to test support. Whenever you form some type of top, and the, getting back to a resistance can be a top. In this case, it was. All that price really needs to do is get back and test support. Well, there were really two levels of support on the two-hour time frame. The first level was profile support. That was tested and that was held. That held all the way up until uh, 10 o'clock this morning. But the other level that hit, and we had an oscillator and change on that change colors out here, it did that at uh, midnight. A test and rejection of an oscillator and change line that changed colors is a confirmation of that color. Well, the green tells that price wants to move higher. So support is held, resistance held yesterday. The question is, will resistance hold today? 44.2375 is the number. What happens if that level fails? Well, the next target would be the TD9 count breakdown resistance at 44.3750. If price were to close about 44.3750, then I would say it too, it too being the two-hour time frame chart, would generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It looks like this. I'm just simply going to move the A to B line over to where the C point would be right now. And that would take us up towards the 44.55 level. 
Now that C to D, that B to C retracement there looks like less than a 0.618. So this would really be more of an expansion of that C to D leg out there. But you have to take things one step at a time. And it's really too early to say that with uh, conviction. But uh, I say it with enough conviction at this stage of the game. So watch, 44.2375 and 44.37. That. So the ES Mini has given us a nice bullish test. Remember, we've got bullish profiles. So we got bullish profile market breadth for the 6240 daily and weekly, and the 30 minute had a slightly negative market breadth. In the case of the NQ, it's really going to be where's that close at 12 noon? If the close, we've already talked about this, but if that closes above that TD9 count top out here, that's what really ran the tables yesterday. And that, that's what identified the high out there. And so it closed above 15,139.25. And it closed above that as we come into the 12 noon time frame. We then negate that pattern and then confirm that A to B equals C to the upside that we took a look at out there. The other two equity future contracts, the YM, the Dow, don't have much here. We've got a nice bottom. There's a couple of different roads meant to indicate bottoms out here. But don't have much else. 1867.80 for the Russell 2000 has proven to be a key level of resistance. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. If price can overcome that, then 1882.80 would be the next area. And if it can overcome that, then it's going to tell us about an A to B equals C to upside that it too will have formed for the two hour time frame chart. So no reason really for us to go take a look at those other charts out there. We've given you a couple of data points that are really the key data points. I would say the NQ being the first key data point out there. And again, that number come 12 noon is going to be 15, 139.25. We close above that, you've got A to B equals CD to the upside for the rest of the day out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, whoever you are. And let's go take a look at the uh, first. We only have two, three requests that have come in. But let's go ahead and get those off of our table here. The first one coming in from Tim. He wants to take a look at uh, BKNG out there. So let's pull that up. Let's actually read the message. That's Booking Holdings. That is actually um, Booking Holdings. Is Oops, she's Louise. Come on, Stevie, wake up here. Um, Expedia. Uh, so Tim writes in, he says, good morning, would you, uh, would love your analysis on BKNG, no position yet. Okay, so we take a look at uh, booking holdings out here. On a daily basis, prices trade, so it formed a roads momentum indicator top. Price pulls back, <clears throat> don't know why it bottomed where it did, that uh, bottom on May 31st, but it did bottom, and the very next day, Price gets back up inside its profile levels. You're now above profile and above a, uh, the resistance of its oscillator and change line. The resistance area here, Tim, that it's dealing with is the uh, swing point from June 6th. And it closed above 27.29.27, 27.29.27. 27, a close above that is going to suggest run back to its all-time highs up at the 27.86 level. Not until that happens will we be able to make that uh, we will be, be will we be able to say that also with conviction. What we can say is that 273175 is also going to be a level of resistance. That is coming from the weekly profile. The weekly shows a confirmed roads momentum indicator top that then led to a test of support, which was the bottom of its profile, 2487. So what we actually have right now, Tim, is a consolidation between 2487 and 2731. The monthly time frame will likely confirm a TD9 count top this month, but that high can't come next month. So um, that's, the, that's the call right now. Today is what, June the 28th out there. So it looks like a pretty decent outcome that on a monthly basis you get a TD9 count top. So let's summarize it. You could get a monthly TD9 count top. You've got a weekly that's already in place with the roads momentum. The same thing on the daily. That would then say... If we get that, that price needs to close above its all-time high to really be on its merry way. So in summary, right now, price is dealing with that resistance level. That was a swing point high from the trading day of June the 6th. If it can overcome that, it gets back to its all-time highs. You basically have a consolidation between 2487 and 2731. So, Tim, I hope that helps you out with regard to BKNG. Pork belly inside the Tiger's Den. Wants to take a look at Riot. R I O T is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Let's go see what Riot is doing. Riot right now is trying to take out a key level of resistance. That's at eleven dollars and one penny. You're at eleven eighty-three right now. 
So Riot Platforms, if it can maintain that, stay above that 1101 area pork belly, that likely signals to you and I that price wants to make its way up to the top of its weekly profile, which has been tested three different times that has acted as resistance. That's at 1258. The question for you and I is, will the fourth time be the charm out there? And I don't have any idea, but uh, the daily chart is then signaling to us on the weekly chart that price at least wants to make a move to that 1258 area. The monthly chart shows that price above the top of its profile, above an oscillator and change line. So that's not a bearish condition. That's kind of a neutral to bullish condition out there. So it does look like to me, Riot wants to make a run for that 1258 area. And what you'd love to see, you know, from a volume standpoint, it's inside a swing point that has volume of, this is April 21st, 106 million shares so far this week. You are at only 55 million shares, but we do have two more days to go. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. We'll take a look at the advanced decline line and the advanced decline indicator. Oscillator for Peter inside the Tiger's Den. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow is off 115. S&P's down 2. NASDAQ 136. Russell just turned slightly positive up 1 point. Semi's down 21. Tranny's up 48. We're taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced decline oscillator as well as the advanced decline line. So panel number two out here 
is the advanced decline line, Peter, which actually topped, uh, hit its uh, high back in uh, 2021. And ever since then, we've seen a declining tops kind of scenario. But we also have a bottom. And this bottom back here in 2022, in October of 2022. And so we have seen higher lows out there. So it's kind of trading with inside a wedge. What I can share with you is the following. We did see a divergence where price was moving higher, while at the same time, the advanced decline oscillator, the oscillator is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. <clears throat> it's a mouthful, but it is what it is. And there, we had price moving higher with the advanced decline oscillator moving lower. That was a caution sign. Now, we've not seen much of a pullback. In fact, all we've really seen is a consolidation with inside profile levels for the ES mini, for the NQ out there. The reason that the market has not gotten any real downside action, just normal actions, because that spot volatility still remains below its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50 days at 15.93 as we speak. If price were to close above that, well, then we would get rocking and rolling to the downside. That's not the uh, a situation that we have right now. So, Peter, I hope that that review of the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline line, as well as the advanced decline oscillator helped you out. We are, or it is, the advanced decline oscillator, that is, is above zero. It closed above zero yesterday. A second consecutive close above zero will tell us that the buyers are the ones that are in control of the general markets out there. So that's the advanced decline oscillator as well as the advanced decline line. That was for Peter in Park City. Sharky wants to take like a ticker symbol AMT. X. So let's get over to those white background charts. Give me a moment. We'll get over, put the uh, make sure we've got the screen up on that as well. So we'll change our screens. We'll get over to AMTX. There we go. That's what you've got up on your screen. So AMTX, and what was the question? Hey, Steve, I hold the position AMTX. Was wondering what your analysis says. It has the potential to go. Pretty easy. Um, as you take a look at these charts out here, AMTX, the first area, Sharky, that you're watching is going to be that daily uh, oscillator and change line. Price right now is trained above the top of its daily profile. So you would love to see a close above 648 today. 648 is where the sellers reside. There's another batch of sellers, and they're at that green oscillator and change line. That currently is printing out at 670. If price can close above 670, You'd be above a green oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. And Sharky, the message there would be price would be targeting its most recent high out here. Now, the volume on that candle session, the swing point, that is, that June 12 session, did volume of 1.9 million shares. In the first two hours of trading today, this has done 367,000. So you're basically at about a million shares. You're coming into a swing point that has volume of 1.9 million shares with probably half or less than half of the volume. So it's not like it's having a breakout party, so to speak. That doesn't mean price can't get up there. What it does mean is you really want to watch that 670 level. I'm not talking 671. I'm not talking 672. Uh, maybe we're talking 675. You'll know it when you'll see it out there, but a close above a green oscillator and change line is a bullish outcome. On the weekly time frame, you're trading above profile levels. Well, let me make sure of this. New profile form last week. The high is at 659. Yeah, so watch 659. You'd love to see it close above that this week. That would be another bullish outcome. On the monthly time frame, price has gotten back inside. Well, I take that back. It was always inside the profile. It is trained above the top of the profile. Now, that's a bullish outcome. If price can close above 584 this month, Sharky, that would be bullish signal. You'd have a bullish signal there. You'd have a somewhat bullish signal on the weekly. It's really up to the daily to get above that oscillator and change line. If it does, price gets back to those highs. Don't know what happens after that. That's your resistance area. So I hope that helps you out, Sharky, with regard to AMTX. That is uh, Amatis Inc. out there. And is dealing with the top of its uh, profile out there. I do see I've got a slight delay right now. It's actually printed at 647, so it's back below the top of that uh, profile out there. So thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next question coming in from Alan inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And Alan wants to take a look at natural gas. So let's pull that up on our screen out here. We'll have the daily, weekly, monthly. It's interday charts out there. So the chart for natural gas on the monthly time frame chart, Bar number eight is very likely going to form this month. 
The question is, will bar number nine complete? In order for bar number nine to complete, that would be for the month of July, you would need to see a close below $2.67. You're at $2.74 right now. So I don't know if the monthly chart is really going to pull off. We don't know whether it's going to pull off a bottom pattern or not. The weekly chart has a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. What price has done, it's run right into resistance of the sell zone. The sell zone out here, Alan, is the bearish structured profile levels. And that is between the price points of $2.77 and $2.88. That is the deal. That is the area, not the deal, but that is the area that this is dealing with. And if price can close above $2.88, well, then you're on your way to $2.27. So you've got a somewhat suspect bottoming signal on the monthly, a very clear bottoming pattern on the uh, weekly. And the daily chart out there, what does it have? Good question. It has formed an A to B equals CD to the upside. That should take price to the $3-ish area out there. But price is pulling back. What is it pulling back to do? Well, it's trading inside a brand new profile. Now, the top of that profile, this formed yesterday, is $2.93. Is it 293 $2.93 there. Where is it on my other charts? Just give me a moment here. My apology for that. But I just wanted to see what I've got there. It's at 277 That's the uh, August contract. So we've got two different profile levels out here. But nonetheless, either way, we are below both of those levels. So if I use the most conservative, that's 2.77. If you get a close below 2.77 today, Alan, that's going to suggest that price will pull back into its bullish structured zone. The bullish structured zone is between 255 and 261. The oscillator and change zone is at 264. That is where your target on a downside move should find support. That would be the area to consider getting into a long position. But what you'd also love to do, Sharky, is as price pulls back to those areas, assuming that it does, you'd then like to come down and take a look at the shorter term time frame charts and find some kind of bottom patterns. Maybe it's a TD9 count, maybe it's Roach Mintum Indicator, maybe it's a buy the D point, maybe it's something else. I don't know what that something else is. Maybe it's a wave D, E, F, or G with regard to the Chapman wave tools out there. We don't have that signal yet. Wasn't expecting to be see that signal, but that's what you'd want to look for. So overall, with regard to natural gas, Alan, it looks to me like if you get a close below 277, that's signaling to you and I uh, a move back to the 255 to 264 level out there. And as price does that, we'd want to look for some type of bottom signals on the intraday charts in order to establish a long position inside of natural gas. And one of the reasons you want to do that is because of that weekly, that weekly roads momentum indicator bottom. And although it's not shown here, folks, I believe that we are in a yearly final TD nine count bottom inside of natural gas. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to go uh, take a look at uh, silver for one of our uh, dinners, uh, Peak G. He used to go by Peak D, and then uh, I guess I convinced him to move it over to Peak G. Now, if you're, I have had these charts up on my screen for uh, during that uh, uh, for a little bit of that uh, radio commercial. Peak, are you seeing what I'm seeing out here? I think you like hockey. I'm pretty sure you like hockey. And uh, but in, whether you like hockey or not, you probably at least like hat tricks. Are you seeing the hat trick that I'm taking a look at? Yes, lots of laughs for sure. And the hat trick that we're taking a look at, I've got the charts for August gold up on my screen, uh, September silver, and then the GDX. And what you'll see is that on the uh, gold chart, it is in wave number seven. That wave number seven that uh, triggered today, we need a higher low in order to confirm that pattern. The uh, silver contract already confirmed a wave number seven pattern. It did that a couple of days ago. And the GDX just triggered wave number seven Oh, wait, it didn't. You know what, Peak? It's still in F. It just extended. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. It just extended F. We're not there. We're close. We're not there, but we're uh, close out there. So the question is, will these Peak Gs, the seventh wave move, is that the bottom signal for gold, silver, and the GDX? It is a very good possibility out there. Now, in the case of gold, gold, you'll see really three different A to B equals CD patterns out here. One is in B, one is in B, one is in blue. Yeah, it starts with B. So that blue one is uh, uh, is a, and that gives us a price projection around 1877 or something like that. The red one, the red lines get us down to 1848. And then the black lines out here actually was more than a one-to-one -one expansion out there. And here's a key reversal bar, June 23rd. A close below that low, which is 1919 -50, that would suggest to me that, well, we're more likely than not going to complete that A to B equals CD. The one in blue or the one in red out here. The one in black is already confirmed. And we're getting a wave number seven, but a close below 1919.50, you know, negates that signal. In the case of silver, uh, you're trading with inside a bullish structured profile. A uh, resistance is held. Uh, the oscillator and change line is held out there. But you've got a bottom. Uh, you've got a uh, wave number seven bottom out here. And with regard to the GDX, no bottom yet. A bullish reversal candle would confirm a, a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. So maybe we're getting close out here, uh, peak. Uh, maybe it's going to be the trifecta, uh, the uh, hat trick out there. But uh, we need to see a higher low inside the GDX and then one more push lower to get to wave number seven. You can have peak, uh, not peak, 
but trough G's across the board, basically in the metals and the mining area. So thanks so much for waiting on that, and I do hope that that helps you out. Charles wrote in, and he wants to take a look at Palantir. PLTR is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's pull up those charts and actually read the question. The question goes like this. Bought as a swing trade, June 27th, so that would be yesterday. Do you see it getting to 1626? And um, in the next 14 days, Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, there's a new profile that formed. And that profile, top of that profile is at 1490. You're trading right now at 1512 or thereabouts. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. Yes, I am. Good. Okay. So we got that out of the way. If price closed about 1490, this is PLTR that we're taking a look at, Palantir. The nods favor, it's going to make a move to 1582. You're asking me about 1626. 1582-ish is the green oscillator and change line. In order for price to get up to the levels you want, $16.26 to be exact, price is going to need to overcome that level. If it does, then what price likely does is gets back to its recent highs. One recent high would be up at the price level of 1691, and then the second one would be up at 1716. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart shows that price is dealing with resistance. That's at 1716. 1716 is the top of the weekly profile. You're right now trading into the center of its weekly profile. And that's at 1518. The monthly chart looks pretty good, but it is still below profile levels. 1985 would be a resistance area. So back to Palantir and back to Charlie from Framingham. And his question is, will this get to 1626? A close above 1490 says 1582-ish is on the board. And you get a close above 1582 and you get back to those highs, which would get Charlie to a 1626 number. Uh, the only thing that's really causing him problems on the weekly are profile levels. You got a consolidation within them. So Charlie, I hope that helps you out with regard to Palantir. Last piece of information I can uh, shed uh, or provide to you is that it looks like this will become day number two of consecutive moves higher. Typically, this will move higher for three to two to four sessions out there. So it does look like you are likely to get some type of short-term top over the next couple of days. Maybe that is then a little bit of a pullback. But uh, that's the typical dance step moves inside the market and inside most instruments out there. So, Charlie, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's go to our next question. This is from Bob in Spokane. Bob writes in he wants to take a look at Micron. MU is the ticker symbol. And MU today ran into some resistance at 67.65. 67.65 is a daily oscillator and change line. It also ran into support. And support is the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 65.76 out there. So you're trading in between today, support and resistance. Which one's going to fail? Not a single clue. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, price this week has pulled back. It's been retesting its green oscillator and change line. It's trading with inside a profile. Conditions are basically uh, bullish to neutral out here. You just have a consolidation as we speak right now. But the consolidation suggests higher price. That higher price would take place with a close above 67.64, Bob, and that is the daily oscillator and change line. The week or the monthly time frame says, I don't know what kind of higher price you folks are talking about. I like this good old-fashioned consolidation. The consolidation runs from 51.50 up to 69.77. So bring it on home for us, Stevie. You got a consolidation between 51.50 and 69.77. If you close above 69.77, well, you'll move a little bit higher, another buck. Now it'd be up to 70.77 out there. And then if you get above 77.7, 71.42 would become the area to be watching and to observe. So Bob in Spokane, I hope that helps you out with regard to Micron. MU is the uh, ticker symbol. I don't see any other requests inside the Tiger's Den. I don't see anything um, I don't see anything by phone. I see just a comment by Nancy out there. So let's just stick with Micron here for a moment. Let's take a look at MU. See if we can find its seasonal. Okay, why aren't we? Come on. Really? That's hard to believe it doesn't have Micron in there. Let me just make sure it's not a Stevie thing. No, it's not. MU. Am I guessing we did this before? Huh, it's not in there. All right. Well, Stevie, hey, as long as you can't get Micron, what do you got up on your screen right now? You know, it's an excellent question. 
those of you who are looking at uh, watching us on Tiger TV or watching us uh, inside the Tiger's Den, you can see it's the S and P 500. It's the S and P 500 for 95 years. The red line equals today. As you can see, this red line says we should have bottomed the S&P 500 yesterday and that it should move higher into the middle part of July. I'd say very likely it moves higher into at least Monday as we come into that holiday weekend. And there's one thing that David White taught us. It's that to expect a change in trend after a holiday, not necessarily before the holiday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. By the way, that movie, The Holiday, that's a pretty good movie too. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so we got a mixed market. Dow's off 86, S&P's up 2, NASDAQ is up 63, Russell's up 4, Semi's down 13, Trend is up 89. Out there, we'll take a look at the stock charts here for Apple. So Apple yesterday negated a TD9 count a, um, as well as a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It did that by one penny when it closed above the uh, bar from the trading day a couple days ago, June 26th. The high on that bar was 188.05 yesterday's close. 188.06, and that's where a penny does make a difference. Now, you've got negated signals, no other topping pattern. You're above the top of the profile on the green oscillator and change line. That suggests we want higher price. As we look to the weekly chart, you're in bar number seven of a TD9 count, so there's no topping signal there. As we take a look at the monthly chart, 
Price right now is taking out prior resistance. Prior resistance was a Rogemintum indicator top, a TD9 count top, a wave number seven top. It had a little bit of everything. That was on a monthly basis back in January of 2022. Price pulls back and tests support its breakout area at the 123.13 level. And now it's been off to the races to the upside. And I don't know where we end the month. But to a certain extent, it's going to be a gigantic surprise if Apple doesn't continue to move higher for at least the next couple of days. What do you mean by that, Steve-O? Well, let's take a look at its normal dance steps out here. First, markets that are in bull markets, the pullbacks out there do not extend beyond four bars. And if we take a look at Apple coming off of the bottom here from back in January of 2023, we've seen a number of consecutive moves lower. But we have not gotten beyond bar number four to the downside. A couple days ago was your typical two-bar knee-jerk reaction low. Well, today is only going to be bar number two to the upside. Just like we have four consecutive bars to the downside, and then we usually get a pullback, we should likely get four consecutive bars to the upside. That says Apple should continue with fire today, tomorrow, and Friday. Monday, maybe not so much. But most certainly, it looks like Apple wants to continue to move higher. If Apple moves higher, the NQ should move higher as well. Folks, have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up for you. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Take care and have a great day.